Thank you to Baxter and John for helping us ring in this Christmas Eve day together. Well, welcome to First Baptist Church. This morning we will celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, concluding that season we have been waiting in together for the coming of Christ at Christmas. This year, during the seasons of Advent and Christmas, we as a church have been focusing ourselves on following the star to Bethlehem, and we are glad that you are on this journey with us today. I have a few announcements for us this morning. First, we give thanks to the family of Boyd Wilbur Gray for the beautiful arrangement in the narthex today, and we celebrate with them what would have been Boyd's Christmas Eve birthday today. We're also grateful to all of you who have provided donations for our Christmas decorations, poinsettias, this year. A list can be found on the insert today in your bulletin of all those who gave in honor and memory of those they love. Tonight, I invite you back again to the sanctuary for a Christmas Eve candlelight and Holy Communion service. It will begin at 4 p.m., and we, we will light the final candle on our Advent wreath, the Christ candle, to welcome Christ into our midst once again. And we will share that light throughout the congregation as it gets dark outside. It's a beautiful service, and I hope that you will make your way back out again for that special time together. And last, our missions committee and our WMU reminds you that there are many ways that we can love and serve our neighbors in this season. We have ongoing donations for the Warming Center, for Patrick Henry Elementary Food Pantry. We also have our Christmas offering, which goes through the end of the year. That is to Heifer International this year. You can learn more about that in your bulletin. And tomorrow, once again, our church will host Richard's Dinner here in our fellowship hall. If you are feeling service-minded tomorrow on your Christmas Day celebrations, they would love to have you come out and help serve those meals, uh, deliver those meals. If you are unable to do that but would like to be a part of it, they continue to receive donations through Grace, Grace Network, and you're always welcome to give year-round for that dinner. We're grateful to be a part of that special ministry so that no one is alone for Christmas dinner. Church, let us call ourselves into God's presence today. We'll have this uh, in a responsive call to worship, which you can find in your bulletin. With the shepherds and angels, we sing. Glory to God in the highest heaven. A child has been born to us. Glory to God in the highest heaven. The grace of God has appeared in human form. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Love incarnate lives alongside us. Glory to God, the highest heaven. Will you pray with me? God of stables, stars, and surprises, of light and hope and love, open our eyes and hearts to your presence in our world. Forgive our obsession with property and possessions. Forgive our compromises and narrowness of vision. Open us to your grace that we might hear again the song of the angels and respond with a song in our hearts and in our lives. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, our coming Savior, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and to join raising your voice in carol hymn number 171, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 171, as we worship together.
Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Each week during the season of Advent, we light a candle on the Advent wreath to signify the hope, peace, love, and joy that Christ brings into our world. Today, we will have Caroline and Andy Tamminger to light our candle of love. And how appropriate, since they just got married last weekend. I'm grateful for Caroline's ministry among us and at our sister church, Chatham Heights. I'm grateful for upcoming ministry with Andy and the Lutheran Church in America. Thank you to Caroline and to Andy for lighting our candle today. Recognizing the gift of the Christ child by which we know the joy of being loved by our God. we've talked about so far? Through Advent, we talked about, do you remember? 
Angel? Maybe. Not yet. We talked about Mary yeah. and Joseph. And now we're going to talk about the shepherds. Yes. Now, Elena, I need some help with this. So as we read the story, when I prompt you, could you help make the faces of how you think the shepherds were feeling? Okay. Let's do a test run. Give me a surprise face. <gasps> OK. Uh, a terrified face. Um, let's see, a happy face. Okay, okay, let's get started. On the same night that Jesus was born, shepherds in the field near Bethlehem saw an amazing sight. They were watching their sheep as they did every night. Then suddenly, an angel stood in front of them. A bright light surrounded them, and the shepherds were frightened. Can you make a frightened face? <gasps> The angel said, do not be afraid. I have good news for you. A baby was born tonight in Bethlehem. This baby will be your savior. He is Christ the Lord. Look for him wrapped in clothes, sleeping in a manger. How do you think they felt after that? Think happy? <gasps> <laughs> then many angels appeared and said, Glory to God and peace to all people. As quickly as they came, the angels left, and the, the shepherds said, Let's go find the baby. So the shepherds left their sheep and hurried to Bethlehem. They found the baby lying in a manger, just like the angels said. They told Mary about the angels. She was amazed and thought carefully about what they said. She wanted to remember this night forever. The shepherds went back to their sheep. As they walked, they praised God and told everyone what had happened. What great news. Can you make another happy face? What great news. Amen. Will you pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. And help us remember, help us remember how, special how special you are. You are. In, your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Very good. You could go be seated. I invite you again to stand as you are able and to join as we sing carol number 166. While by the sheep we watch, number 166. While by the sheep we watch that night, glad tidings brought an angel bright. How great our joy, great our joy, 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 praise we the Lord in heaven on high, praise we the Lord in heaven on high, there shall be born so he did say. Joy, joy, joy. 
The shepherds couldn't help but share the good news that had graced them. The baby that they had found. They wanted the whole world to know. So we too want to share this good news as followers of Jesus, both in word and in deed. Your commitment to giving to the ministries of this church and our ministry partners provides for sharing both love and service to our neighbors. So whether you're already regularly giving, giving just this one time today as you walk out the narthex, or making plans to pledge to give in the next year, we are grateful for the support of the work of sharing this good news that you provide to us. This good news that reaches from here in Martinsville all the way around the world. So will you pray with me as we bless the offerings we've received? Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, thank you for offering your love so bountifully to us. May our gifts back your kingdom work. May they reflect your love shining from within us. We sing your praises with the angels and shout the good news with the shepherds this day. Bless all these gifts and all who give in this season. We ask this all in the blessed name of Christ our Savior. Amen.
I hope you all are following the star alongside us now. Thank you to David for finding such a lovely piece to go along with our theme for the year. Well, as you have heard already, we've read a piece of the Christmas story, haven't we? It's a piece of the Christmas story most of us are fairly familiar with, about the shepherds and the angels. We might remember the old Peanuts cartoon, Who's Harold Angel? <laughs> well, three weeks ago, I have a funny story about shepherding. Three weeks ago, some of you were here for it. On the first Sunday of Advent, our church and our sister church, Chatham Heights Baptist, joined together for a Christmas lunch over at Chatham Heights and a barely rehearsed Christmas pageant that was put on by the children from both churches. Now, if you missed it, it was quite adorable, as all children's pageants are. The Christmas story was read and acted out by robed and haloed and fuzzy animal-decked little children. And they all sang a handful of Christmas carols, choruses to move the story along. And I was given a very specific role at the last minute to play because two of our littlest children, just toddlers, were dressed as sheep. And our poor little kid shepherds could not wrangle them and keep them from jumping off the stage. So I donned an adult shepherd robe and did my best to hang on to two rambunctious little fuzzy toddlers. The tops of their costumes, the little sheep ears, they were the first to go. Not many toddlers want anything on their heads for more than a minute or so. Then, of course, they couldn't sit still through the whole reading of Luke 2, before they, and they were supposed to head to the manger at some point, but before they were supposed to head stage right to the manger, they got loose, and they headed toward the baby Jesus at a breakneck pace. So your friendly neighborhood shepherd sought after her lost sheep, but right about the time I started to guide them back to the fields on stage left where I was supposed to be keeping watch over them by night, both of them, at the exact same time, had their legs turned to jello, promptly fell right out on the stage floor. So here I have two arms of two little sheep, and we keep moving, and those little sheep are dragged back to the fields at stage left, which prompted a great many giggles from the audience. Some of you are still laughing today at how funny that was. So despite not having a shepherd's crook that day, I managed to keep our little sheep in place until it actually was time to go to the manger to see the king that had been born, you know, after the angels had stepped forward for their glory to God in the highest montage. And, you know, the rest of the kid shepherds and all their friends sang those final numbers. And I shepherd gripped a couple of toddlers beside the holy family till it was all over. And you know, I learned something that day, is that shepherding is just not easy work. I mean, just two little sheep kept me on my toes for the longest 15 minutes of my stage career ever. And you know, I think it's really interesting that in our faith, we revere shepherds so much. I mean, left and right, right? Throughout the scriptures, we keep reading about shepherds God is described as a good shepherd, Jesus too. And people who followed God and led God's people are also described as shepherds or pastors, a word meaning shepherd. Moses was a shepherd, Midian. The prophet Amos was a shepherd. King David himself began his life as a lowly shepherd. With all the focus on a Messiah being from the house and line of David, well, I guess it kind of makes sense theologically to reach out to shepherds, right? And yet in Rome, at the time of the birth of Jesus, shepherds were about the lowest skilled workers around. These were peasants performing labor that no one else wanted to do. They weren't influential people. One scholar I read even said the Roman lists have been found that say shepherds are largely uneducated and crude. And you know, 
Jewish religious leadership wasn't that much different, despite all their sacred stories about shepherds, because shepherds at the time, by virtue of their pr profession, couldn't keep purity codes well. So when our text today has shepherds being the first to receive some pretty big news about the birth of the Messiah, it's saying something about what this birth really means. So let's take a look at what was happening to these lowly shepherds as they hear this amazing news. And then I think we can take seriously what it means that the news of this birth came to them first. First, we see them out with the flocks at night. Now, shepherds would not have been out with their sheep in the winter time, so likely the birth didn't likely happen right here around December the 25th. The church picked that date later on. I mean, if the birth had happened in the winter, the sheep would have been in their pens. So instead, scholars tell us birthdays weren't really as important in the ancient world as they are today. So it never mattered much to early Christians to figure out exactly what day Jesus was born on. So they took an already celebratory day in the winter and made the birth date to remember the incarnation of when Jesus was born. And so shepherds are probably sitting out in the evening. It's warm outside. And they're taking watches. That's when we, when we read the word watch. They're taking turns watching their sheep. And you know, watching sheep, there's not a whole lot to do because they're sleeping. It's, it's nighttime. So a shepherd's kind of bored. When I think about shepherds today, they're probably out in the fields with their cell phones scrolling through Facebook because <laughs> it's pretty dull. There's not much to do. They just need to glance up, make sure the sheep are fine, go back to it. Back then, maybe they were playing flutes or talking to one another. And then, all of a sudden, there is an interruption to all of this boredom. While they're taking their watches, something amazing happens. In the night sky that was otherwise dark, maybe a little starry, shining bright was God's glory and messengers, angels, who must have realized pretty immediately that these guys were terrified of what they were seeing. And like most of God's messengers, they give comfort to the mere mortals who see all of this. Fear not, for I am bringing you good news of great joy. Some sources, ancient sources even, tell us that Jesus was probably born at the height of the night, at midnight. We get lyrics in our carol in the bleak midwinter, when half spent was the night from those stories. So in the midst of a deep darkness, in comes this piercing bright light, shining God's glory. It was jarring. And you know, I don't blame the shepherds at all for being terrified. <laughs> that would terrify me too. And you can almost see the shepherds cowering and looking at each other incredulously. Who, me? You, you, you came to t tell me? Like, I'm, I'm the guy no one wants around. I'm the poor guy. Nobody even knows I'm here. What on earth? Why me? And the angels tell them about this good news of great joy. There will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. Wait, wait, wait. A sign for me? Like me, generic shepherd guy. Why is there a kid in a feeding trough? But before the poor shepherds could even begin to process all of this instructions to go find the baby, the heavenly host breaks out into song. Glory to God in the highest heaven. On earth, peace among those whom he favors. And I think that that song, as they heard it, much like Handel's Hallelujah Chorus, had the shepherds standing at rapt attention. Whatever else these shepherds were ever going to experience, this was something they would never forget. And what better way to end the encounter but with a massive chorus praising God for this amazing good news. And you know, something else about shepherds is that they probably weren't typical religious folks at all. 
I mean, they couldn't be for purity reasons, but it also just is hard to keep all those laws with the type of job they had. They were so distrusted in their society, they couldn't even be called as witnesses in court. And yet, it is to these low-level, likely rapscallion-type shepherds that God's message of the birth of a Savior comes. And like Jesus teaches us later, the kingdom of God is like a banquet, banquet where all of the wrong people have been invited. Because wide and long is God's table, even when we would like to narrow it to our own prejudice. Preacher and professor Fred Craddock put it this way. He said, the shepherds belong in the story not only because they serve to tie Jesus to the shepherd king, David, but also because they belong on Luke's guest list for the kingdom of God. The poor, the maimed, the blind, the lame. I think Luke reminds us of this important detail of God's incarnation to this earth, the sharing of important information to lowly shepherds, because it reminds us that this good news is for everyone, not just the most religious or put together, not just the ones without doubts, not just the smartest or most elite, but for all of us, wherever we're standing, whatever standing we have. One pastor put it this way, he said, churches today may largely be the preserve of the middle classes, but Jesus is most certainly not just the savior of the respectable middle class. He's the savior of the whole world. And yes, Jesus is good news, not just for regular churchgoers, but also for non-churchgoers. And what's more, Jesus is good news for all people, even those who for one reason or another have failed to live up to God's standards. And thanks be to God, because isn't that all of us? This message given to the shepherds, it's for us all. Maybe especially those of us who haven't had it very easy. Because God's message of incarnation, of becoming to live like us, is a promise to be with us, to know us intimately, to humble God's self to come to earth to be with us. It's a good message for the hard up, the struggling, the most fearful of us. What better news could there be? And for once, the birth of a king is not assigned to the most powerful, but assigned to the least powerful. And to those least powerful first. And you know, it tracks because at the resurrection in the Gospels, it tells us that women, also mistreated and outcast in their time, were the first to witness the resurrection and sent to go tell that powerful news. The shepherds, much like the women after them, and so many in between, Samaritans and other outcasts, they've all had a similar response to this amazing news, running to tell everyone who would listen about what they had seen and heard. They don't hesitate when they're given their holy task. Their feet are indicators of their faithfulness. They don't look at each other, or they, they do look at each other, and these shepherds say, what do they say? Let's get ourselves to Bethlehem, fellas, right now. Let us see this thing that has taken place. They trust God at God's word. And so off they go as fast as their feet will take them. And what do they find? They find exactly what God had promised through the angels. Mary and Joseph, a baby lying in that feeding trough. And unlike our narratives that, or our nativities that have our shepherds kind of sitting there marveling at the baby, the shepherds actually see it and take off immediately. They've seen all they need to see tonight. Now it's time to go tell everyone what they've seen and heard. And people who heard the shepherds were amazed. But imagine it was kind of hard to take the word of a shepherd I mean, some of them probably didn't trust them to begin with, but they're amazed at what they're hearing. Mary's sitting there kind of soaking it all in in her heart. 
I mean, I can't imagine hearing that about my own child from shepherds in the fields. And the shepherds kept singing that hallelujah chorus, didn't they? When they returned back to their sheep, that's all they could do was keep singing. Nothing would ever be the same again. I think that the shepherd's response teaches us something about how we all ought to respond to knowing that God has chosen to put on flesh, to dwell with us, to come humbly and love us face to face. That it should be a story shared, a love lived into, and a hope given to all, whatever our life situation. I think if Luke wants us to remember anything of the story of God with us, of Jesus' birth and life and death and resurrection, it's that Jesus was the king of the marginalized. As the prophets foretold, God chose to dwell among the lowly. Jesus was not born among the wealthy elite or those of good stock. Jesus wasn't part of Rome or their cronies. His parents didn't rub shoulders with the powerful, and the angels didn't come singing in the palace courts. If we are to be like the Savior that we worship, I think we too need to let go of our need to be recognized by the powerful. We need to stand with God's presence and compassion among the broken and the lowly and identify with them. I read one pastor who said, in the incarnation, Jesus appeared among the broken and the broken received him. And two millennia later, he still draws near to the lowly and invites us to be the humble among whom he finds welcome. So may we be humble as lowly shepherds, receptive to this amazing news, and share it with wild abandon in a word and in deed this Christmas. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing our song of response, number 169, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Number 169. the benediction. May the God of love surprise and inspire you as this message of Christmas surprised and inspired the shepherds. May that holy encounter change you and send you singing God's praises this day. Amen. Amen.